In this video, I'll show you how to use the Gaussian software to carry out density functional theory calculations for organic compounds. For example, let's reproduce some of the DFT calculations in this paper. So if you look at the supporting information, the computational details are included. They used this MO6-2x functional. MO6 stands for Minnesota 2006. 2x means double the exchange from the Hartree-Fall calculation. So usually in DFT calculations, uh, in particular the hybrid DFT calculations, between 20 to 30 percent of the exchange uh, energy comes from the Hodge 4 calculation. 2x, I think that means uh, between 40 to 60 percent of the exchange comes from the Hodge 4 calculation. And then the basis set. Uh, we're going to use this LNL2DZ basis set for very heavy atoms because they contain uh, many, many electrons. Um, it's not efficient to model all electrons in the quantum mechanical manner. So we're going to use this LANL2 pseudo-potential to describe the core electrons. Uh, DZ stands for double zeta. Uh, this is also a double zeta basis set uh, for other atoms. So I'm going to show you an example uh, that includes carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nit nitrogen, and uh, maybe not adding, but bromine, uh, but it's similar. And then we're going to do optimization plus frequency for that organic molecule. After that, to get a better uh, accuracy, uh, we'll also do single point energy calculation uh, performed at this, uh, uh, energy, uh, this uh, level of theory. So again, we'll use this Minnesota 2006 with double exchange energy from the hydrofoil calculation. Uh, we'll use this SDD basis set for, uh, in our case, the bromine atom, and also SDD as the pseudo potential. And also, we'll use this triple zeta. So, this 311 means valence triple zeta basis set for all other atoms. Plus plus means uh, diffusion functions are used. Uh, D and P are polarization functions. Uh, this D means we're going to use uh, D type polarization functions on carbon, oxygen, and nitrogen, and this P means we're going to use P-type basis functions for hydrogen. So let's look at the GJF file, the input file. So I made this file already, and I'm going to just show you the content of the file. I'll explain things. Over here, uh, percentage N proc shared equals 4, the number of processors uh, they share the same memory, and we're going to use four processors. Uh, MEM memory equals four gigabytes. Uh, percentage check. So this is a check file. This check file contains uh, the calculation results, including the molecular orbital coefficients. And then pound sign here, followed by a space and optimization. So we're going to use OPT equals max cycles equals 200. So I put it here because um, uh, this ensures that the calculation, the optimization calculation doesn't die uh, because uh, the number of optimization steps exceeds um, 30. I think 30 is the default, so I'm changing it to 200. Uh, for molecules that are difficult to optimize, uh, I recommend you to use max cycles equals maybe 60, 100, or maybe 200. And then uh, I put frequency here, FREQ, so that we can do frequency calculation right after optimization. Over here, M062X, uh, pay attention here, there's no uh, hyphen here. So this is just the format in Gaussian, M062X, no hyphen in the middle. Uh, GEM means general basis set. We're going to enter the basis set um, after the coordinates. 
uh, this is pseudo potential pseudo equals read so we're gonna read in some uh, pseudo potential empirical functions to describe the core electrons of heavy atoms and then we have s c r f self-consistent reaction field and then we specify this solvent equals methane here again this uh, self-consistent reaction field uh, is going to be uh, the methane solvent uh, this line is just a uh, annotation so this is to remind the user that we're gonna do optimization and frequency and then actually we're also do the single point energy calculation okay uh, zero that's the charge of the molecule one is the spin multiplicity uh, the spin multiplicity is equal to one plus the number of unpaired electrons so we have zero unpaired electrons one plus zero is one so that's why we have a singular here uh, and then um, this are the XYZ coordinates of the atoms in the molecule. Now I need to specify the basis set. Again, this GEM is general basis set to be entered later. So right here, carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. So this uh, number zero means for all such atoms, for all carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen atoms, we're going to use this basis set, 6-31 GDP basis set. This is a double zeta basis set. Actually, um, valence double zeta. So for the valence electrons, uh, we use uh, two Gaussian functions for a valence S electron. Uh, this is just the format star, 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 star. And then for bromine, uh, this zero means for all bromine atoms in the molecule, we're going to use this LAN L2DZ basis set. This is the format pay attention to the blank line here and then we're going to enter the pseudo potential for all bromine atoms we will use l8 and l2 pseudo potential so we need to specify pseudo equals read here and we need to um, enter the pseudo the name of the pseudo potential uh, this stands for los alamos lab version 2 pseudo potential and then uh, I mentioned here that we're going to do single point energy calculation, right? So what we need to do is, again, a blank line followed by dash dash link one dash dash. Okay, so this is just the uh, syntax. And then number of uh, shared processors, they share the same memory equals four. The memory, we're going to use four gigabytes. Uh, percentage check equals, okay, this check file should be the same as this check file, all right? So exactly same check file so that we can uh, use reuse the molecular orbital coefficients in this calculation. Again, pound sign space SP single point energy calculation SP single point space M06. Again, no hyphen here. M062x is this M06-2x DFT method slash general basis set here gas equals read that means we're going to read molecular orbitals from this check file so this is usually very helpful uh, for the uh, initial guess of the molecular orbital coefficients geometry equals all check that means over here i'm not going to enter the coordinates so we will just read the coordinates from this check file and this check file comes from this first optimization Plus frequency calculation so that means we're going to optimize the structure using this basis set and then we're going to calculate the energy using a bigger basis set uh, this is a commonly used strategy strategy um, to save computational time again pseudo equals read we'll have to enter the name of the pseudo potential later again self-consistent reaction field so this uh, uh, compound is placed uh, in the middle of this dichloromethane molecule. Uh, now carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, nitrogen. Again, zero means all such atoms. We're going to use 6-311++ GDP basis set. Again, 311 over here. You see three numbers. That means this is uh, valence triple zeta basis set. 
plus plus are diffuse functions, uh, especially if you're dealing with uh, molecules, molecules with uh, uh, very electron negative uh, atoms or negatively charged uh, ions, or uh, you need to look at the uh, uh, very diffuse orbitals. Use plus plus here. Uh, DP are uh, polarized basis functions, polarization basis functions. Again, D means uh, we will um, employ D type basis functions for carbon, oxygen, nitrogen, and P is for hydrogen atoms, uh, for stars. And then bromine zero, we're going to use SDD basis set. Uh, why this one is different from this one? Actually, I don't know. Uh, I'm just trying to reproduce the uh, DFT calculation of that paper I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And then over here, another um, blank line, and then bromine zero, and then SDD. Uh, my guess is SDD is uh, probably a larger basis set than this one. That's my guess. Uh, usually, we need to balance the basis set. If we use valence triple zeta basis set for carbon, hydrogen, oxygen, and nitrogen, um, it's better to also use a basic, uh, triple zeta basis set for the bromine atom. And over here, this SDD, again, these two SDD, they look the same, but this SDD means uh, we're going to use this SDD basis set for valence electrons. And this SDD means we're going to use SDD pseudo potential for the core electrons. Uh, they just uh, share the same name, right? And then we're done. So we close this, and we can visualize this file uh, in Gaussian. So it's just this molecule, all right? Two carbon, four hydrogen atoms, one oxygen, one, um, one oxygen, one nitrogen, one bromine, and we can just look at the calculate setup, and you can see a bunch of uh, options I specify. Uh, optimization. Oh, this is just the title. Keywords. So if you look at the keywords, optimization, max cycles equals 200 frequency, uh, general basis at, uh, self-consistent reaction field, etc., etc. So anyway, uh, this is the molecule we're going to do. All right. And then you just use uh, either Gauss view or Gaussian to run the calculation and we'll get the output file. So I, I did the calculation already. And uh, let's search for normal termination. Right over here, uh, this is normal termination of optimization and frequency calculation. It took 8 minutes 15 seconds. And uh, if we screw up, we can get the uh, uh, energy here. This is the energy here. And if we screw up further, we'll get the optimized coordinates. All right, coordinates here in Astrums. So those are the coordinates. Uh, 6 is carbon, 1 is hydrogen, 35 is bromine, 8 is oxygen, 7 is nitrogen. And also you can uh, see frequencies, you can see, okay, uh, this, yes, 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 yes. If you see four uh, yeses uh, in the same column, that means it's optimized. And then I want to show you the frequency, it's got to be somewhere, uh, Oh, maybe I should search for frequencies. Okay, frequencies. Um, don't worry about the first six smaller ones. Those are actually um, rotations and translations. Uh, because we're doing numerical calculations, there are numerical errors. Supposedly, they should be zero. Okay, but now uh, if we really want to look at vibrational frequencies, this is the smallest one, second smallest one, and then number three, and you can scroll down. Uh, this is not a linear molecule, so we will see three, three m minus six vibrational frequencies. So three minus three, three m minus six equals 21, all right? So that means uh, we have nine atoms. And then you can see uh, at this temperature, this is the default temperature and pressure. We have uh, some other uh, thermodynamic functions being calculated here. Uh, these numbers are, uh, this is 0K internal energy. This is room temperature, internal energy, 
room temperature enthalpy, room temperature Gibbs energy. All right, so this, again, this is Gibbs energy. It's not Helmholtz energy. It's Gibbs energy. So this one is H minus Ts at the room temperature. Also, we have the heat capacity, the entropy, and also um, it tells you what's the translational heat capacity and entropy, what's the rotational and vibrational heat capacity and entropy. All right. And then uh, I think we did the single point energy calculation, so we need to scroll down a little bit. You will see the single point energy calculation. SP means single point energy calculation. Single point means we do not optimize the structure. Uh, we're just uh, reading the coordinates and compute the energy. Okay, We don't worry about uh, changing or optimizing the bond distance or bond angles. Again, this is a method. This is a basis at, general basis at, uh, reading molecular orbitals reading geometry from the checkpoint file or CHK file, so this file, pseudo-potential over here, uh, self-consistent reaction field, etc. And this calculation is just to get the energy more accurately using a triple zeta basis set. So usually I just uh, do control F and I search for SCF done. All right, so, but don't stop here. You just uh, uh, search, find again. Sometimes you'll get two such lines that contain SCF done. Uh, use the more negative number. So uh, in this case, we have only one number, so it's this number. This is the energy of the molecule using triple zeta basis set. So why do we use the double zeta basis set for optimization and frequency and triple zeta to get the energy? Very simple. We want to balance efficiency and accuracy. It's much faster to use a double zeta base set, that's why we use it for optimization and frequency. It's slower but more accurate to use triple zeta base set, that's why we use the triple zeta base set to just calculate the energy. And there's another reason. If you use a double zeta base set versus a triple zeta base set to do optimization calculations, uh, the final molecular geometry uh, using uh, either double zeta or triple zeta would be very similar to each other. So that's why we often use double zeta basis set to do the op optimization calculation. Good enough. Uh, and also, when you do frequency, make sure you use the same basis set as the optimization uh, calculation. Otherwise, your vibrational frequency will be uh, problematic because the energy gradients are uh, are not exactly zero, are not close to zero, okay? So make sure that when you do optimization and frequency calculations, make sure you use the same basis set. And then you can use a larger basis set to do single point energy calculation, all right? This is very commonly used strategy in computational chemistry. Uh, and then let me just uh, open this using Gauss view so that we can see some uh, vibrational frequencies. Uh, this is optimized molecular geometry. It becomes planar. I think this is because of this conjugation. Look at result. Look at the summary. So we have summary here. Okay, so this is the energy right here, um, triple zeta. This is triple zeta energy. Uh, unfortunately, we cannot actually see vibration only because uh, I think this Gauss view only uh, display the result of the last calculation. We actually did three calculations, optimization, frequency, and then single point energy calculation. Unfortunately, it shows us only the single point energy calculation result right here. Okay, so this SP stands for single point. So how do you visualize the uh, um, vibrations over here? Um, I don't know. One way I would do is I would just delete uh, the last single point energy calculation and then open the output file and then you will see the vibration. So it sounds silly, but uh, I think it works. Another way is this. You just do optimization and frequency calculations in one file. After that, you visualize your result, uh, get the optimized 
structure, the optimized coordinates. And then you do the single point energy calculation in a different file. And then you can visualize the vibra uh, vibrations and also uh, you can see the single point energy over here. All right.